Hello, today we're working on a Hewlett Packard Chromebook. This is a Chromebook 11 and it has a broken power jack. We'll zoom in here on the power jack and show you what we mean. Inside of this power jack, there's supposed to be a black plastic bushing in the center and that bushing is broken off. You can just see the exposed metal contacts inside. To replace that power jack, we need to expose all the screws on the underside of the Chromebook, and they're hidden underneath little rubber bumpers. A sharp object like a pocket knife works pretty well to remove these bumpers. You can get underneath and pry them out like that. But make sure that you keep track of where these come from, because these bumpers are different sizes. Some are angled to match the angle or the curvature of the bottom of the Chromebook. So I'm popping them out and just setting them aside in the same pattern as they are located on the Chromebook. Once the bumpers are removed, you can see the screws. They take a number one Phillips. Once all the screws are removed, we'll open the Chromebook. And if the device turns on, we need to turn the device off first. Then, starting around the edge of the keyboard, we can pry down slightly on the bottom part of the case and there are clips all around the keyboard plus one clip in the middle actually just a little bit offset that hold the keyboard in place. And just get underneath and pry up the keyboard very carefully. Be careful not to pry the keyboard right here. There's a ribbon cable that connects the keyboard and the trackpad to the motherboard underneath and if you pry up on this part of the keyboard and hinge the keyboard up this way You'll, you can damage that ribbon cable or the motherboard where it attaches. So we'll loosen the keyboard around the edges as best as we can. Go back to our pocket knife and just very carefully remove these, unclip these clips all around the edge. A little pressure on the front of the keyboard is fine, but no more than that. Once we have these clips released, I can get my hands underneath one side of the keyboard and I'll put some pressure on the front of the keyboard with this hand and with my wrist. And you can pry up. I'm putting a fair amount of force in this keyboard now, but I'm trying to pry up the back part of the keyboard. So that's loose like that. And now I will hinge the keyboard forward to review, reveal these ribbon cables. Let's zoom in on this ribbon cable. This is for the keyboard itself. There is a black plastic tab that holds this ribbon cable in place. This tab flips up from the front. So get underneath the front with your fingernail, lift that tab up, and this ribbon cable lifts up and pulls straight out. Over here, this ribbon cable is for the trackpad. It works the same way. This little keeper is white. We'll lift the white tab up like this, and the ribbon cable slides out. Now we can zoom out, and the keyboard is free. We'll set the keyboard aside. Next thing I like to do is to take the battery out. This is optional, but it is kind of in the way. There's one screw that holds it in. And be careful that you make note of where these screws come from inside of the computer. They are different sizes than the screws underneath and there is one special screw over here that is different from all the rest. Furthermore, there are some holes that don't have screws that don't need screws. So you will want to make sure you don't try to put screws back in these holes here. This side of the battery is free and it hooks in down here. We'll pull it aside and then remove the connector from the motherboard, it pulls straight out. Now we can set the battery aside. Now let's zoom in on some details. There are some more connectors on this motherboard that have to be removed because this whole motherboard has to come out of the Chromebook to expose the power jack. So right here we will flip this keeper up and remove the ribbon cable. Over here this is the cable going to the power jack that we will replace. 
we'll slide that out. This next cable goes to the speakers in the front. We'll carefully rock that out. And then up here is the cable going to the LCD. We'll flip up this black keeper and lift the ribbon cable out. Now we'll remove the Wi-Fi cables. If you just lift up on these slightly, they pop right out. Now we will remove some of the screws that hold the motherboard in place. This first screw holds the Wi-Fi module in place. When we remove this screw, the Wi-Fi module will hinge upward like this, but there's tape holding it in place. We can leave the tape in place. These screws are also different, as I mentioned, so be careful to keep these separate from other screws that you've removed. This screw right here is shiny, and make sure you know where that one goes because that makes electrical connection to contacts on the motherboard. The screw here. And one right here. Right here and right here are two tabs that still hold the motherboard in place. So we'll lift up on the board. I start up in this corner and I want to pull the board this way up toward the screen and it's free of this tab and then we'll pull the board this way to my right and it's free of that tab. Now let's rock the board back and forth until it slides out. We'll set this aside. Next I'm going to lift the LCD up and if you look carefully right here we need to remove two screws that hold this hinge in place because they cover the screw that holds the power jack in place. And I'll show you why I lifted the LCD up in a moment. These screws are also different, keep them separate. Now with the LCD hinged up, hinge it back down and that part of the hinge is out of the way revealing one screw right here that we'll zoom in on. This screw holds the power jack in place. The power jack is not attached to the motherboard as you can see it is a separate part which makes it easy to replace because no soldering is required. We'll take the screw out and then this cable as we zoom out is just attached to the bottom of the case with some double-sided tape. You can pull it right out. Now we'll zoom in on these two power jacks. In my right hand is the old one, my left hand is the replacement power jack, and I'll grab a flashlight and take a look at the insides. You can see how the jack on the left, the replacement, has a black plastic part in the center that keeps the terminal separated inside of the power jack, and that's missing on this jack on the right. They break off inside of the power adapter, they can be removed with a paper clip or a pin pretty easily. Uh, these Chromebooks, I've, I've been repairing several of these. In the past four months, I've replaced 11 of these power jacks for a local school district. Uh, must be a common problem, so that's why I thought I would make a video showing how to repair it. I'll discard the old power jack, and we will install the new one, just the same way the old one came out, with one screw. We'll reinstall it. Now there's a detail on how this cable is to be routed. So we'll zoom in right here on this power jack. We need to pull this cable out just a little bit. We need to leave it just a little bit of slack. And then zooming back out, we can lay this cable back in the same track that the old one was in. There's usually enough double sided tape left in there that holds it in place pretty well. When we go to reinstall the motherboard now, if you look carefully right here, this tab on the motherboard needs to go underneath that black cable going to the power jack. And if you zoom in right here, you can see how the power jack cable comes over top of this tab and then goes underneath the board through this cutout. Now we'll zoom back out. Watch those two plastic tabs right here and right here that hold the motherboard in place. 
make sure the motherboard is underneath those two tabs and is seated to the left. Once that's done, reinstall the screws that were removed earlier. Remember this silver screw here goes right here. All the screws are in the board that we removed. Now we will reattach the hinge on the LCD with the two screws that came out. With those two screws in place, we can fold the LCD out of the way and reconnect all of the connectors that we disconnected earlier. This connector, as with the keyboard connector, has two little black tabs on each side, and those tabs go behind some little plastic guide posts. If you look close on your Chromebook, you'll see what I mean. And then there is a white line on this connector that should be flush with the very top of the white socket on the board. Then when you close that black keeper, that white line is right on top of that black keeper. Getting a closer look down here, we'll reconnect the speaker terminal and the new power jack connector. This can only go in one direction and you want to make sure that the brass colored terminals are visible. If you don't see the brass terminals, it's upside down. So make sure the brass terminals are visible when you go to reconnect it to the motherboard like that. Looking up over here, we have these two connectors going to the Wi-Fi module. They are numbered. I don't know how much that matters, but they're numbered and they correspond to numbers that are on the little connectors on this Wi-Fi module. I realize it's probably hard to see on screen, but when you look at yours, you'll see what I mean. To reconnect these, you line up the connector on the cable with the connector on the Wi-Fi module. And I realize I'm going to block the camera, but you just give it a little push with your thumbnail. And usually, with a little help, they pop into place. You have to get them underneath that plastic. I'll move the plastic out of the way. Give them a little push with your fingernail. Then you can tug on them gently, they shouldn't come off. Those are, that cable is routed through some little clips up here too. They're not always done like this from the factory, but they're supposed to be. So they're supposed to go behind this tab, through this channel, behind this tab, and then connect to the Wi-Fi module. Once you've done that, double check that they're still connected because I think this one is loose. And then right here is another ribbon cable. We'll lift up the white keeper. We'll slide the blue tab underneath the white keeper. And there is a black line on this blue tab. Once you insert it and close the white keeper, that black line will be just about flush with the top of that white keeper. We'll zoom back out and install the battery. The battery has a tab right here that goes in a slot on the bottom case. We can also reconnect the power cable and reinstall the screw at the right side that holds the battery in place. Now I mentioned earlier it's important to make sure you turn off the device before you do this work because the keyboard actually acts as the heat sink for the main processor. Once you remove the keyboard there's no heat sink, no cooling for the main processor, and it could quickly overheat. We'll make one more quick check to make sure that all the screws are in place, all of the connectors are reconnected, the Wi-Fi module is in place, and then we'll lift up the keepers on these two connectors. We'll reinstall the keyboard connector. Close the keeper. Same with the trackpad connector. Same with the trackpad connector. And close the keeper. 
now the keyboard is laid flat on the, on the device and we have to push it down so that these clips will reconnect. Just apply force around the edges until these clips pop back into place. A fair amount of force is required, and that's okay. I haven't broken one yet. Once you've reattached these clips around the edge, give a good press toward the middle and reattach the clip in the middle. Make sure that's level and it's seated. And before we install the screws on the bottom, let's apply power to this Chromebook and test it. Right now, before you apply power, because the battery has been unhooked, if you go to try to turn the Chromebook on, it will not power up, and that's okay. We'll need to apply power first. If you zoom in here by this power connector, you'll notice that when you apply power, this light comes on. An orange light means the battery is charging, or a white light means the battery is fully charged. But in either case, make sure that light comes on. If you have a good power adapter and it's making connection here, that light should come on. If it does not, there is a small fuse on the circuit board inside that blows. And I've seen it on four or five Chromebooks now where that fuse blows. Next time I come across one, I'll record a video and post it on YouTube showing how to replace that fuse. But in this case, we're all set and the device is powered up. At this point, I will flip the device over and reinstall all the screws along the bottom that we took out earlier. Now that we've reinstalled the screws, let's look at these bumpers very carefully. If you look over here, you can see the pattern I've laid out on the workbench of where they came from that roughly approximates their location on the Chromebook. Looking back here at the Chromebook, these screws in the middle, these two, and these screws on the edges, they're these bumpers rather, they're just simple round covers, doesn't matter how they're reinstalled. But the bumpers along the very top, which are these two, and along the bottom, these four, only go in one way, and the two on the top are different from the four on the bottom. Looking at one of the bumpers, if we zoom in on this, I don't know how well you'd be able to see this, but this is one of the bumpers from the top, and it has two notches on the bottom of the bumper. Those two notches engage with two little keys inside of the hole where the bumper goes. And those two little notches point straight down. When you reinstall the bumper, make sure that those two little notches are lined up and press it in place. The same with the bumper on the other side. The bumpers on the bottom, if we zoom in here, only have one notch and that keyway points straight up. When we reinstall these bumpers, we'll align that notch straight up and press it in place. Same with the remaining four. Make a note of where that keyway is and press it in place. At this point, we're ready to test the device if we zoom out. When you open it, it should turn on by itself, or you can press the power button. If you're doing this work for a paying customer, as I am, take time to charge the battery, clean the screen, test the trackpad, and test all the keys. And that's all it takes to replace a power jack on a Hewlett Packard Chromebook. Thanks for watching.